Hi, I'm Professor Marina. This is English 271, Shakespeare in Film. We're going to read some Shakespeare this summer because he's kind of a big deal. But we're also going to learn a lot about how films get put together, how films get made. I grew up watching movies, which makes it easy for us to follow how a movie's story is being told without really thinking about it. But because we don't think about it, that makes it hard for us to understand how it's put together. We're tr we've trained ourselves not to notice how a movie really works. One of the nice things about a Shakespeare film class is that we can see more than one director take the same story in different directions, turning them into different films. And actually, it gives us a chance to see more than one director turn the same story into more than one pretty good film. The class isn't about saying, this movie is good, that movie's bad, that's too easy. And the great thing is, two different filmmakers can take the same story, the same play, take it in two different directions and come up with two different results, both of which work. Three filmmakers can take, take three different approaches to the same play and come up with three results that are not alike, but aren't bad. They all work. They're all Hamlet or Macbeth. The other thing this class is not about is beating up on films that aren't faithful to Shakespeare in your opinion. If you think Shakespeare, you're, someone's not being faithful to Shakespeare, that's just your opinion. We can't be faithful to Shakespeare. He's been dead a long time and he didn't leave us any instructions. Mostly when people say that's not faithful to Shakespeare, they mean I don't like it. And I don't like it is too easy. Sure, there are people who should know better who will go to a movie or a play and come out and say, Oh my God, they ruined Hamlet. Oh my God, they ruined Hamlet. What are we going to do? Hamlet's going to be fine. Believe me. Instead of worrying about which movie is better or which movie is more faithful to Shakespeare, we should focus on how these movies tell their story. You see more than one talented filmmaker telling the same story in different ways, which means using their storytelling tools in slightly different ways. And that gives us a real chance to focus on how those storytelling tools are being used. And that teaches us how to tell a story in images. What matters is not the story. What matters is how the story gets told. Lots of people had written the Hamlet story before Shakespeare wrote his version. And really, we don't care. What matters is how he told the story, how he put it into specific words, how he set up specific scenes, how he gave the actors particular chances to play a part a particular way. In the same way, when you film Hamlet, it's all about how you tell the story in images. How do you set up the camera? How do you set up the frame? At what angle? How do you edit it together? How does the camera move? How you tell the story. We're reading the Hindle book and learning some basic film terms so you can start cracking the film storytelling code. So you can start to see how movies are actually put together as a work of art. When we're watching the short clips for the first unit for week one, Use those terms to try to describe what's happening, and I'd especially say pay very close attention to how many times we cut, how many times we move from one image to another. We're used to, as casual moviegoers, just skipping over that. We understand that all those characters are standing in one place having one conversation, when actually the camera is jumping back and forth between a whole bunch of different images. But it's important in terms of understanding how a visual story is told to remember that these are separate images and we are jumping between them. That's one of the reasons I've been in a fairly crude and obvious way using different shots for this short video. And yeah, the editing was really crude and amateurish because I'm an amateur, but you noticed it. Let's try this. This week, while you're watching the, uh, the silent movies and the Much Ado About Nothing trailers, just try to count how many shots there are. That's it. How many times does the camera switch from one image to another image? And how often? See what that teaches you. Okay, talk to you later.